Hey, the top of the morning to you whosoevers. Today is the sixth day of November 2019. God bless you. Que Dios te bendiga. Today's morning message uh, is entitled, Depend on God's Righteousness Rather Than Your Own Efforts. That is uh, the righteous works of the Lord on the cross. That's what the Lord did for us. Uh, when he purchased us by the shedding of blood and the remission of sins uh, on the cross. So, uh, let me get into the message. Let me pull over. I'm trying, to, trying to get this thing situated. Um, are you ready? It says, We are so fortunate that the Lord is gracious and righteous. Our God is full of compassion, otherwise we would be doomed by the lack of righteousness. Our righteousness does not depend on what we do, but on whom we place our faith. And Paul explains this. He says, we are made right in God's sight when we trust in Jesus Christ to take away our sins. We all, call, all, we all can be saved in the same way, no matter how we are or what we have done. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Yet now God is his gracious kindness declares us not guilty. He has done this through Jesus Christ who has freed us by taking away our sins. For God sent Jesus to take the punishment of our sins and to satisfy God's wrath or anger against us. We are made right with God when we believe that Jesus shed his blood, sacrificed the life for us, and we are born again. The Bible says there is nothing that we could do to earn God's gift of grace. We accept it by faith, but God no longer sees our sinfulness, but only the righteousness of Christ which covers us uh, in our lives. When we put our faith in Christ, we received a new nature uh, from in Adam to in Christ. One of holiness and righteousness. Christ wants us to display his righteousness in our new life. We are commanded to throw off the old evil nature and your former way of life, which is rotten through and through. It's basically to the core. Right? Uh, he also says, uh, put away those things uh, in our lives that were full of lust and deception. Instead, there must be a spiritual renewal of our thoughts and attitudes. You must display a new nature because we are a new person, created in God's likeness, righteous, holy, and true. Yet we are all tempted to achieve righteousness under our own power. That is the temptation of the devil, right? That never works. We cannot live righteously without the enabling of the Holy Spirit, and his power is released through our faith. For example, if a person has a problem with swearing, He could try harder to quit using foul language. For the most part, he would be able to control his tongue. But when someone cuts him off on the freeway or breaks it in in front of him or in a line, his mouth curses before even he realizes that he is saying. All his efforts to control this reaction came to nothing. The secret of a change Changing bad habits like cursing is to turn the problem over to God. By faith, admit that you are helpless to change your bad habit. You're a drug addict. You're saying, oh, how am I going to change? Well, you can't. Admit to God you're a sinner. The secret to changing your bad habits like cursing is to turn the problem over to God. By faith... Admit that you are helpless to change your bad habit. By faith, ask His Holy Spirit to give you the righteous language to replace the filthy language. As you walk in the Spirit, moment by moment, your heart is prepared to act righteously. The next time someone angers you, when this happens, take a deep breath. Start praising God for something good in the situation. Trust God to take over the work out the problem. This will take a different reaction and the result uh, that will change uh, the problem. So, uh, again, concerning these things, um, God is able to do that work in your life. You know, you have a problem with uh, pornography. You say, Lord, I'm, uh, 
I, uh, I have a problem with pornography. I need your help. And you admit to the Lord, and by faith, baby steps. Baby steps. You know, you ask the Lord to help you with that problem. And then whatever the next problem is, or, or whatever comes your way, God is dealing with you. Because God is going to deal with you uh, one problem after another, after another, after another. You know, we all have anger issues. We have uh, cursing issues. You know, I only have cursing issues when we're, we're talking, uh, you know, people I know, we're talking about things that are happening um, in maybe Watsonville. Um, and, and it's just like, oh, it makes me mad. And then, and then but I, you know, I catch my. Here's this, I catch myself cussing, not literally, I ch I'll change the word. That's maybe one thing I'll do. Or second of all, I'll start to come out and then I'll change it. But there he says, I, I know brother what you were going to say. And it's like, yeah, I was going to say it. But I didn't. But then you say something else. So, you know, how is God revealed in your life? You know, the righteous work of the Lord on the cross is the greatest gift to mankind. It just really was the greatest day, uh, greatest day in human history, you might put it, that God himself took the punishment of all our, all our sins and all, all us sinners, and he took the punishment on himself that we deserved only to uh, die and go basically to the to Abraham's bosom, and that's where all the Old Testament saints were. Um, the Old Testament saints were uh, waiting uh, for us, uh, waiting waiting for the promise of the Messiah. And remember, the Bible says that there was a gulf uh, between those who were in hell and those who were in Abraham's bosom, and uh, God set the captives free. And, and then he resurrected, right? And then, and then he walked around and um, he preached, you know, he preached salvation. And again, we can trust God's righteousness because, again, uh, one of the greatest days in your life is when you realize that you're never going to be more righteous before a holy God the day you were born again. Let me say that again. You're never going to be more righteous than the day you were born again. For a holy God, because it's not your own righteousness; it's the righteousness of the of the Lamb. It's the righteousness of Jesus Christ, sinless, uh, sinless sacrifice on the cross. You know that's why people say, well, "Why do you preach Jesus? You know, you're always talking about Jesus." It is the greatest thing. You know, it's it's able to make a vato loco crazy. A bato loco, crazy guy, um, and change his heart and change his, you know, change that those bad habits that we, we all learned as a, as, as you know, living the lifestyle, and God is able to transform, uh, you know, a, a sinner into a saint, and He's able to use your your past and your uh, your your failures. You know, when, when you see somebody in a deep pit, you could be encouraged because you've been there. You've been there in, in that deep hole in, in life. You know, you don't. Have, they don't have to. They don't have to uh, explain to you that the the bottomless pit of des despair. You might say. You know, everybody's everybody's uh, everybody's bottom is a little. Some are some some are a little deeper than others. But again, like we were having a Bible study last night, you know, the problem is not, you know, her drinking or his drinking or his drug addiction or, or this is the fact that they're spiritually dead and in Adam uh, and where they need to be born again and receive the gospel and be in Christ to be able to overcome those, uh, you might say that those habits and those uh, things that he's sown in the things in your life that you've sown that are bad seed. Only God could transform that. Uh, you know, remember God is the potter and we're the clay. Uh, again, the potter would form, would spin the wheel and would form the vase or the vase, vase or vase, 
uh, into what God has called you to do. And, and you know, remember what's, what was the most important thing in a vase or a vase, what was inside it, you know, the, the, you know, because no matter how beautiful the vase and the vase what is, uh, it's not alive. It's just a created thing. And, you know, what God does in a person is that he puts himself as, as a person who is alive uh, in a vase uh, or a plant in a vase. He puts his Holy Spirit inside us. And he says he is the potter and we are the clay. And he molds us and he transforms us into the person God has called us to be. Uh, to be that light and the salt to those around you. To be that fresh smelling aroma in a dark, dark, dying world. And, it, and the gospel is so simple that a child, Jesus says, unless you become a child, you won't be saved. You know, what does that mean? He says, childlike faith. You know, that, that, that the righteous work of the Lord and the perfect word of the Lord on the cross can be, can be given to anybody who believes as a free gift. And be born again and be saved. How is a person born again? No one knows really. There's no formula. But the Bible says, uh, again, concerning being born again, it's uh, John chapter 3. He says it's the, the being born again of the Spirit is like a wind that comes. And no one knows how it comes or where it goes. But so it's likened to everybody who's born again of the Spirit. Uh, we don't know. There's no formula. But if we give the gospel and we encourage the lost and you... Uh, you do a great work in a, in, in a person's life by, you know, really giving them the, the good news, which is the gospel. You know, it's not the bad news. It's, um, remember, again, hell was a place prepared for the devil and his angels. It was not prepared for man. And you don't have to die in your sin. You can be born again and receive a new life. You, you can start over. You can literally start over. Give me a second chance. And I, and I believe that being born again is the greatest chance to, for anybody who could ever... Uh, not only does God give you, again, a, a, a second chance or being born again, but He also gives you the Holy Spirit to help you. He doesn't just leave you, uh, okay, you have another chance, now try again. But, the, but, but what, like, what's different about this is the Lord does that work in you the deepest part of you for the greatest to be to be again a light to those and an assault uh, to those who are walking in darkness and are you know uh, don't know the Lord and God says I'm going to work through you and in you and for you um, he doesn't just give you a little bit of life he gives you eternal life that no man and the Bible says no man uh, could take you out of the Father's hand so may the Lord bless you, be girded, be strengthened. The Lord is coming, He's coming quickly, and the reward is with you.